Hey, it's Jay at the Unnamed Podcast. I have a bit of a dilemma. The, uh, my friend Nathaniel actually put it best. Uh, so I have three particular topics that I wish to touch on, so I'm going to do multiple episodes. First one is having a favorite band is actually a bad idea. And that will be the first episode that I do today. So why is it a bad idea to have a favorite band? Why is it negative on the scope of music as a whole to declare one band as being your favorite? To give that much power to one band to express all the different avenues of your artistic preference to one name, one band, one style of music even. You cut yourself short. You don't look at every possible avenue and aspect and you ignore all the other avenues that are possible in the grander scheme. For example, I used to declare my favorite band as Our Lady Peace. I loved that band for many years, and I still hold true that Happiness is Not a Fish You Can Catch is one of the greatest albums of all time. Do I still think that Our Lady Peace is the best band of all time? No. Why? Because I don't love everything they have ever did. And they started releasing things that I didn't care for. I saw it as the ultimate betrayal. The reason I felt that way. Let me further explain why I got into Early Peace. Let's start with that because it'll make everything so much easier. Early Peace, to me... Just close enough to the music that I was into as a whole. But they were just experimental enough. If you know Clumsy at all, you know it has some really interesting takes on where you can take music and do things with. And again, like I said, Happiness is Out of History you can catch up being one of my favorite albums of all time. Spiral Patrol Machines was brilliant. Gravity? When that came out, I actually... Initially, I took it as some great ideas, because the band could do nothing wrong in my eyes. Upon further listening, someone recently, that album is fucking terrible. It's got some tracks on it that are almost an embarrassment. I dare say it's actually bad. But I digress. For me to just accept it as brilliant was so easy because I was such a huge fan of, fan of that band. Like I mentioned, the band could do nothing wrong, and therefore there's nothing that could be bad about that album. And to anybody who tried to convince otherwise at the time, I'm so sorry. A more recent example would be, until about five years ago, my favorite band was Tool. Again. They could do nothing wrong. And what was really nice from this almost worshipping level of obsession that I had, Tool went so long between releases. So it was really easy for me to be like, this band is great. They never released anything bad. Sure, it's been, you know, multiple years since their last release, but they did nothing wrong. Ever. To the point where I've gone back and listened to 10,000 days, and it's okay. It's not my blowing. When it came out, I would tell people it is one of the better albums of all time. I actually saw them around that time. By around that time, I mean, for tool standards, it was around that time. So I saw them a couple of years after that album came out. Again, there's nothing wrong with the, well... I shouldn't say again. But realistically, there's nothing wrong with the album. I actually listened to that album somewhat recently. I won't say, you know, yesterday I listened to the album. It was a good time. No, it was like, I don't know, six months ago, eight months ago, I listened to the album, and it was still not bad. But what I found interesting was they released um. I don't even really remember when. 
within the last year. And I listened to maybe 45 minutes of it. Not even that long. Maybe 30 minutes of it. It is boring as hell. They do absolutely nothing new. Nothing new. And that's kind of when I realized that I don't like the idea of having a favorite band. Favorite album? I see nothing wrong with saying something is your favorite album. For instance, Cursos Domestica. Easily my favorite album. Easily. Won't even bat an eyelash at that. Really have on the list as well. Logic will break your heart for the stills. Funny enough, I was actually listening to that album very recently. If you know it, awesome. If you don't know it, you're missing out. It is a very, very good album. But the reason I say that you can have a favorite album instead of a favorite band, you're limiting your scope down to this is a great example of what you can do with art. Whereas if you say, this band is my favorite, you're saying everything this band does is good. But that opens yourself up to just accepting when they release something shit. When they they themselves look at something and go, yeah, we release something. So as I hinted at the beginning of this, this is one of a series. I really had to go on this mild tangent rant thing talking about how you shouldn't have a favorite band. What I'm going to tackle in the next one is this weird trap that I find people in where they completely bash uh, mainstream bands in favor of a more independent sound. And why I think that's a bit silly, it has some flaws in it, it has some holes. And I'll further explain that. I'm not going to go into it right now because I haven't done my research. The first episode being, you know, why you shouldn't have a favorite band. That I can do off the top of my head. The difference between corporate and independent and the nuances with that. I want to do a little bit more research. And I will get back to you ASAP with all that fun stuff. So anyway. Takeaway point, don't have a favorite band. And if you really need to, just be totally willing to be proven wrong. Anyway, again, Jay Garden of the Unnamed Podcast, I love you. Hmm.